Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and I want to report that Mama Teresa Termel passed along on January the 9th, quietly avoided a lot of pain. But at least she had a glimpse that the Mayan prophecy of a heaven on earth was going to come true before the end of this year. So this was my speech to our friends at the Branford Inventors Club a few nights later on Mama Termel. At any rate, uh, Mr. John termel has got uh, amazing information he wants to share with us. So anyway, I was going to do the story of the Mayan prophecy because I've done two videos in YouTube on it. And you know I'm saying that the world can be fixed soon. Well, I contacted William Hill Bookmakers in Britain. And when I went to Europe in 2000, um, Lord Such, he was the Guinness record loser in elections. And in the Guinness Book of Records, they had him at 15 million to one odds of never being elected for the Prime Minister. So while I was there, I went and made the bet. And I got it in my turn, 15 million to one odds. I want proof of that. So I contacted those same bookmakers. And I said, I want to make a bet that the Mayan prophecy happens by next year. What odds you give me? And I said, not for the bad, but for the good. I said, I bet by next Christmas, world's fixed. Peace and prosperity on the way. What are the odds? Anyway, I, I posted it to the whole world, my offer. And uh, I got a response. Said, you want a million to one on uh, how, how's a million to one? I said, that'd be wonderful, but I want to see what the book he's going to say first. You know, maybe he'll give me 15 or 20 million to one. But that's nice of you to offer me a million to one. I say a pence for 10,000 pounds. And he writes back and says, we are William Hill bookmakers. We're offering you a million to one. I said, okay, I take the bet that by next Christmas, we're beating our swords into plowshares, our tanks into tractors, and our aircraft carriers into love boats. All right? So I took the bet, and he offered me a million to one. So if by next year the world's fixed, now you know all we got to do is reprogram the bank's computers so that you all have interest-free credit lines at the big bank, sugar daddy bank in the sky, and all of your problems are gone, right? A minute. If you had an interest-free credit card at the Bank of Canada and you could settle all your debts and your mortgages and your credit cards in one number, and after that all payments go against those debts until they're paid off someday. Don't tell me that wouldn't make your lives heaven. Stabilize your debts. Well, anyway, my own prophecy by next year, million to one odds. So I got the bet down. And I was gonna the two videos on it as well, like how it can happen. And at the same time, though, my mother, my poor lady, you, many of you remember her because she was here while she was healthier in those days. Well, right in the middle of it all, she starts to get sick. And, you know, and I'm expecting her to have a horrible death because she has Raynaud's disease and the blood circulation is bad and the limbs fall off after gangrene and she lost one leg and the hands were numb and the other leg was going and she died on Monday quietly in her sleep, all right? So actually it was right after I'd given her a face massage and then I noticed that she wasn't breathing anymore and within three minutes the emergency people were there and I'd done compressions, you know, and they took over and they got the pulse going again, they got her to the hospital and said it's too late. So anyway, my mom was a great mom, so I went home and I wrote my little story about uh, my great mom to start it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to read what I posted on the internet in honor of my mom, whom you, many of you know. So, And Tom Kennedy, our friend, you know Tommy, well he picked it up and he found this great picture of her, I don't know where, and he put it up there and took my article. And so basically he called it Mama Therese Departs Planet Earth by John, King of the Poppers, Trumel, and one of the greatest moms ever passed away on the afternoon of January 9th, 2012, and I found out it was the birthday of her next sister. So in other words, she's going to be arriving in heaven on birthday for her sister. Neat, do eh? Talk about being called up the right day. Born April 17th, 1929, Teresa Termel, mother of John, King of the Poppers, Termel, and brother Raymond Termel, and Mariev, niece. 
uh, school teacher translator, always supportive of our mission of creating a usury free lifestyle for everyone on this planet. Well, that's Tom Kennedy's words. When you hear usury free, you know, he threw that in there. Now, back to me. She'd been suffering from Raynaud's disease, weak circulation to the point gangrene develops and extremities end up amputated. Her hands were numbed and she'd already lost her first foot and her second foot had just started acting up. We were expecting to have it amputated like the first. But this afternoon she just stopped breathing and while I was with her, I tried to shake her with no response. I called 911. They had me do chest compressions for the three minutes till the emergency crew arrived. They got her pulse back and then took her to the hospital. When I got there, the doctor told me she passed away. Keep in mind, this was the mom who went to a bank to borrow money to get me the 3,000 bucks I needed to go gamble in Las Vegas on my first junket in 1974. Remember, I was taking the gambling course, mathematics of gambling, so I was pretty good. I learned how to beat blackjack. I said, Mom, I can beat blackjack, but I need three Gs. That's like 15 today. How many moms would go get 15 Gs on a credit card right on the house to send you gambling Vegas? Come on, that's faith. Yeah, Mama. So, um, where am I? That's 15 Gs today. How many moms, you know, would borrow money to send the kid to Vegas to start me off on my life of crime? Anyway, I had the many times busted running casinos. Anyway, I had the honor and the pleasure of taking care of her in her last days, years, yeah, and can admit that her passing away in 20 minutes was a blessing compared to the end I'd envisioned for her, suffered otherwise, you know. I mean, coughing up every morning with the the stuff and not being able to pull it off with her fingers, she'd be suffocated to death after all the pieces are gone. Anyway, maybe it was a blessing in disguise, though her brain was working fine. Sad. And she promised to take as good care of me in the next time around as she had in this one. Well, I hope. She wanted to be cremated and we'll have a memorial for her up in Rouen around the Quebec, where most of her relatives are based in the spring, so she can be buried beside her parents. She had a great fun life and was a great fun person. Plus, she did the dishes, ironing, and proofreading of all my official stuff. Derek, the paperwork, she proofed it all. That cut you off. I guess we're not Derek Bruce. I guess we'll need a new chief financial officer of the Pupper Party of Ontario that I just started. She was it. Now, new forms to fill up. Her <laughs> chief financial officer just died. Anyway, she was in public life till the end, wasn't she? Ran for parliament twice. Anyway, so I know I'm going to miss her greatly, and the greatest disappointment is that she will not be around to see the fulfillment of the Mayan prophecy. An interest-free world, she helped me fight all of her life. Just like her father, Adelard, and mother, Angelina, she was staunch and social creditor, too. Lone shark in bed. Anyway, I know what banquet table she's sitting in heaven with the other great abolitionists of usury in history. Bye, Mama. Love living with you in this dimension. Can't wait to see you in the next. And I've explained that to you before, right? Okay. So, P.S. No need to send condolences. I know how you feel, friends. So, anyway, Tom then mentioned uh, an article where, uh, then I posted some of her videos. Back in 1984, there was a Peter's People. CBC video about me, the gambler, and my mom's on it, and then pick it into Bank of Canada. And she gets a clip saying, you know, when we were poor, we remember that, and now we're trying to help the poor people, and I support and I approve. And you know, when I sent the 22,000 bucks in 84 to finance the Let's Green Dollar software, uh, she approved. That's family money. So my mama put her money where her mouth was many times, but betting on me to go gamble. Three G's, I came back with another 1,600. And you know what's neat? Is that I expected to win 40 bucks an hour. But I never expected to land right where it should be, because I got envelopes on all of the play. First standard deviation, bell curve, second, third. But to land right where it should be, wow, what a boost to believe in your math being right. So anyway, Mama is now out of this game. But I wanted to tell you about her past and how she became that way. I mean, she was Miss Marple Extraordinaire. I couldn't get away with anything, you know, ever. Always a step ahead of me. I figured, how could 
anyone be so bright? And I think back to her kind of history. Rural Quebec, Adelard, uh, who was uh, born in 1898, the granddad, and uh, by the time he was 18 in 1916, they had conscription, and they wanted to grab him and send him to die in the World War I. And the Abbe Leclerc told him to you know, duck out with the brothers, live off the land for three years, and he did, and he survived. Draft dodger, World War I, the war to end all wars, didn't go, didn't believe it, and survived, and here we are today. But after that, 10 years of baby making. Okay, that's Quebec, rural Quebec, you know. 12 kids, six survive, six die. Those were the odds in those days, around, you know, depression in rural Quebec. And uh, so that's what he was facing. And granddad started, well, he was a bright guy. He had to go pick blueberries with the family to raise money every summer. And here's a bright guy, inventor, had to go and carry eight 20 pound baskets of blueberries that the five daughters were picking up to the road a mile, a mile and a half with straps over his shoulders. You know, must have been a very powerful man to do that much, you know. And, but then out there, he would be able to sift. He built himself a machine that would sift them and blow away with a blower all the chaff and stuff and leave nice berries that weren't bruised and got the highest prices. So, brilliant inventor. But always chafed at the fact that he could never borrow enough to get the resources he needed to try and invent. Our standard complaint. We got no credit in the eyes of our banking system because that banking system was taken over. Well, in his day, he finally heard about a movement called social credit by an engineer named Douglas. And it talked about things like the monopoly of credit, how a few banks and families can control who gets any new chips to get into the game while everybody else starves unless they pay really long, sharp rates. And things like the development of world dominion, how you can take over the world, chips, if you loan sharp them to the suckers and they fall for it, let you foreclose on their stuff. You know, economic democracy. Wow, what's wrong with our economic system that's not democratic? Well, how much say do you have in it? So, and finally, cheer it up in 1935 when Bible Bill Eberhardt won power out in Depression, Alberta, the Alberta experiment. Now, of course, he wanted to start up province of Ontario chips, like the Argentine bonds, provincial bonds, like bus tickets to pay people with, new chips, provincial chips. And before he could get his legislation passed, Oh, objection, Supreme Court of Canada said only the feds can run chips. You've got no jurisdiction, you're not allowed to run chips. So they have to sit there and not have any chips to run an economy and all starve. And he tried other ways doing it, prosperity certificates with little stamps on the back, anything to give paper they could trade around, called it funny money. But they said that it was a failed experiment. Go look, social credit, failed experiment. Why? Because Supreme Court said, can't try it. Anyway, that's my granddad who'd been cheered by social credit. And I didn't know this, the ethos my mother had been raised under. But for her to be able to just walk out there and throughout her whole life, anytime I was ever short, she'd always give me anything she had. It was like a common bankroll. Kind of funny to have that kind of financial love. But that's what friendly credit, social credit really means, family credit. And uh, these days they've got families all split up into little clans and little groups and some of the kids are rich and some of the kids are poor. Ugh! You know, Bible says your abundance should at the present time be a supply for their wants so theirs can later be a supply for yours. So if you're up, you should be sharing so that hoping they're up later to share back. Well, that's what good sociable social credit meant to our family. And my mom lived it. I felt it. 